getting stem cell injections are insanely expensive. Like trying to do them in the US, you're generally not getting what most people want when it comes down to stem cells and you're paying ridiculous amounts of money. So a lot of people end up going overseas to get them done. And even then, it's still very expensive when you factor in travel and whatnot. And there's no guarantee that anything's gonna happen. Like most of the people that I talk to when it comes down to stem cells, I'd say it's like a 50-50 shot in the dark. Like sometimes people are like, yep, I swear by it, it worked very well. Sometimes people are like, no, it didn't do anything. It was a giant waste of money. What if there was a way to increase the effectiveness of your natural stem cell production. Not even increasing stem cells, but increasing how effective they are. So specifically talking about what are called hematopoietic stem cells. So stem cells, there's multiple different categories, right? Like there are stem cells for the gut, there are stem cells that you might get, you know, an injection in the knee for. Hematopoietic stem cells, if people ever get stem cells done in that fashion, it's usually like infusion. And it's arguably one of the more risky ways to go because hematopoietic stem cells, that's what forms blood cells. So the things that could go awry are a little bit, I don't know, higher, right? Now, when we're younger, stem cells form, these hematopoietic stem cells, and they kind of divvy up to the right areas. Like some of these go to the immune system, some of them go to blood cell formation, some of them go to, uh, they all kind of go where they're supposed to go. As we get older, what ends up happening is an unbalanced amount of these hematopoietic stem cells end up going towards immune function. Now, on the surface, that sounds good. But as we get older, most of us have a pretty overactive immune system to begin with. It's what ends up happening is you have so much in the way of memory T cells, T cells that have become uh, well versed in all the different pathogens you've been exposed to throughout life. Your, your, your immunity has like a really strong memory of all the things you've encountered, but your ability to be exposed to new things and adapt is much, much lower, right? So because of that, you try to get these stem cells over to the immune system more. But we have one really big problem. We have a lot of mitochondrial stress and a lot of damaged mitochondria that end up causing sort of increase stem cell activity into the wrong area. So what we have to do is we have to focus on mitochondrial health. We have to focus on ways to sort of stress our mitochondria. So when people say that hopping in a cold plunge or a sauna or anything that's kind of a stressor or even temporarily going hypoxic, like going up to altitude or working out to a point where you're hypoxic, they don't necessarily increase stem cell production. I mean, they can through some ways, but in a lot of ways what they're doing is they're stressing the mitochondria and making the mitochondria stronger so that when the stem cells form, the ratio is better. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, there was a study that took a look at urolithin A specifically. Okay, urolithin A is a compound that I've talked about a lot of times on this channel. It's in pomegranates, it's in some foods. Only like 30 to 40% of people actually extract urolithin A. It is what is called a postbiotic. So when you consume a food, how it interacts with your gut determines what you extract from it. So you've heard of prebiotics, where that's like what forms gut bacteria. Postbiotics are what happen after the bacteria have interacted with something. So let's say hypothetically you ate a pomegranate. 30 to 40% of people would end up extracting this urolithin A from the pomegranate by way of the gut microbiome interacting with it. That leaves you with 60 to 70% of people that would not get the benefit. Now what this literature suggested is that at least in rodents, supplementation with urolithin A increased the mitochondrial resiliency. So it actually restored mitochondrial function. So it made it so that when the body produced hematopoietic stem cells, they went to the right place because there wasn't dysfunctional mitochondria kind of overacting in one area. I know that sounds complicated, but it was proper diversification. So the hematopoietic stem cells were able to help reduce anemia, help produce blood cells the way that it should, and a little less towards this already somewhat overactive, like misinformed immune system. This is hugely important, but it illustrates a really big picture on how mitochondrial strength and resiliency is what can potentially dictate how stem cells do their job as we get older. So imagine if your stem cells were simply more effective. Now, I understand I've talked about your lithin A, so people probably wonder, where that is and where you can get it and whatnot. I put a link down below 
you know, full disclaimer, they are a sponsor on this channel, so I wanna make sure I disclose that, but that link down below is a 10% off discount link using code THOMAS10. So Timeline is the name of the company. They have a patented technology called MitoPure, where they've been published in a lot of the big, big, big journals talking about urolithin A and its benefits in humans and rodents. So that link down below, you can get your hands on urolithin A in multiple different forms. Highly, highly recommend it. So top line of the description underneath this video. Now, you can also eat pomegranates, but there's no guarantee you're gonna get that. Now to rattle off a few things that might be very beneficial. Short, short, short cold exposure, one minute. Okay, you don't need to do anything super long. Like one to two minutes gets you the mitochondrial resiliency without pushing you so far overboard. One of the biggest causes of overall what's called inflammation, where inflammation is just chronically high with time, like when we get older, is the increase in reactive oxygen species, the increase in oxidative stress. If you are already someone that is moderately unhealthy while you're older, adding more oxidative stress by doing something very stressful does not help you. That's where the whole no pain, no gain message actually irritates me because there are a lot of people that yes, pain is going to be a lot more pain. <laughs> so it's not a matter of saying like, oh, I need more pain to get more progress. No, you need a dose dependent amount of it. The best thing that people can potentially do for stem cell function, in my honest opinion, based on the literature that I've read, okay, you can't take me to the bank entirely when I say best, I have to just look at what I've looked at. Time-restricted feeding, where you go periods of time without eating, because you are increasing your mitochondrial resiliency. The reason that urolithin A works, the compound I talked about, is because it increases mitophagy. It forces the mitochondria into an autophagy state where it's recycling itself. Caloric deficits do that too. But most people find that a caloric deficit is really hard to stick to, like you're tracking, you're doing this meticulously. So time-restricted feeding, where you're forcing your body into autophagy and mitophagy, one of the best things you can do for the mitochondria, like hands down, one of the best things you can do to strengthen the mitochondria. And when you're older, it actually has benefits too, because reducing your caloric intake is going to reduce inflammation to begin with. The only thing you need to be extra careful of is if you reduce your caloric intake or you time restrict feed, it is imperative you get as much protein as you possibly can while you are eating. Here's what I would recommend if you're say over 40. I would do early time restricted feeding three days a week. And that's where you are essentially skipping, like stopping eating at 2 p.m. and you're skipping dinner. Okay, the evidence is very clear that a larger breakfast is good for maintaining your muscle and for keeping lean as you get older or in general. So I would recommend you don't 86 your breakfast. I would recommend if anything, you 86 your dinner and go a period of time from like 2, 3 p.m. skipping dinner, coming back around and then eating a nice big breakfast with a lot of protein. Also, reducing your alcohol intake because the alcohol, although some people will say, okay, it's very, very good for longevity. Now, the newer 2023 research that looked at over 4.2 million people suggested that one drink per day or even a small amount of drinking does not contribute to longevity. If anything, it's detrimental. It does not have an impact positively. And we know mechanistically, it disrupts gut epithelial function. So it breaks down and damages the junction proteins in the gut, leading to longer inflammation cycles. So you're having more inflammation, right? So when we come back to the stem cells here, the best way we can get potency out of our stem cells is having strong mitochondrial function. I'm gonna go out on a limb and this is completely something that's just my opinion. If you are someone that is doing stem cell treatments, having stronger mitochondria might help them stick a bit more as well because you're adding these stem cells in, you want them to go to the right place. So that's a very important piece for those that are spending the money and investing there as well. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.